today I have a huge demonstration coming to the farm. Something that could change farming forever. Let's get to it. So we're still in winter and for whatever reason this snow is still sticking around but not really uh, freezing the ground completely solid so we can still get some chisel done. So I just arranged a awesome demonstration. So the case dealership is trying to uh, keep up with the new John Deere dealership by our good friend Buck is putting up there so they pulled out a big stunt if you don't know buck our good friend buck is uh building a uh, another platte valley equipment or john deere place in the case dealership they are sweating it so uh they basically uh want to uh keep up uh really impress the farmers around here so uh basically beans we're about the only farmer in the field still chiseling or doing any type of farm work whatsoever they decided to we were a top candidate because uh they want to do this sooner rather than later they don't want to wait till spring they want to do it right now so uh, which is sweet because we get to try this out. I've seen it at uh, farm shows. It's been almost at all of them, but we'll go see it. Oh, oh, oh. I really thought this camera was off. Oops. Here, let me wash my hands while I'm at it just so you can see me doing this. Okay. Okay. There. That, I'm a little embarrassed now. I'm gonna run outside. What's up, Gina? You know you could come in the house, don't you? You can just come in, in the house when you uh, get cold. There you go. There's some food. I need to scoop out all the snow away from your uh, doghouse. It just keeps snowing. First, we need to go... Uh, I need to go get some... Uh, feed for my feedlot so I'm gonna go go grab the my feed wagon run it down to where we chop the feed and I'll load that in there and uh, go feed these cattle brought the bales back here I just want them nice and close just in case we get uh, a huge winter storm because if you don't know when we're doing that all it was down coming down huge and uh we didn't get near the snow we were supposed to, so we definitely lucked out. But uh, I need to make always make sure that these cattle are fed. And uh, especially when there's a lot of snow on the ground, they need the best immune system, they need the best insulation. So I'm going to go put some uh, alfalfa, ground alfalfa in our uh, feed wagon there. And uh, if you're hungry, I'll get you some nice leafy alfalfa here soon. I do enjoy my feed truck, so definitely should have a feed truck when you have a feed line. Just for the fact that you're always driving it. Almost every day. So our uh, feed is actually just down the road here. So this is part of the old farm, the remnants, uh, basically all that's left standing. Put that right there. Guess I could have just let that run in. And I got hay and everything spread all over the place here. I didn't really, I was in a rush. I uh, rushed this whole feed process, but uh, I definitely mess, made a mess. Let's see if this good old uh, JD will start over here. Kind of left it out in the cold. Uh, yeah, of course. Yep, starts right up. 
So beans, we're going to use the loader and the hydraulics. You definitely want that hydraulics nice and warm before you start uh, moving that stuff. Because uh, otherwise it moves pretty slow. All right. So now we are going to start putting this into our feed wagon. That's why I left this tractor down here just in this for this use. Go lift this up. This uh, loader just lifts up just high enough to get into this feed wagon, which is surprising. You would think a big loader like this would really lift high. Because uh, basically, let's say the smaller size loaders lift just about as high. Let's say for uh, let's say like a 6 series loader. We're almost lifted just as high as this, but you would imagine this means it's for a bigger tractor, bigger wheelbase, bigger frame of tractor. It would lift higher, but... I don't know, maybe uh, most farmers don't need it to lift that high, I don't know. But in my book, with this big bucket we have on here, it probably would be better if we lift, was able to lift it higher. Be good if my scale worked on my uh, truck too, that would be nice. Try to get this all out of this doorway as much as possible. So I was saying the other day just how much I use this uh, 8R. Man, I, I think I use it almost every day. So this thing has been a huge investment for me. Uh, definitely paid off. Don't know if I could ever get rid of my uh, 8R unless I uh, trade it for another version or something. Do see that there's they are in works with a 8RT loader. Wouldn't mind having something like that on the farm, but if not, this thing will work for many years, that's for sure. Looks like we're finally getting a little hump in that uh, feed wagon. Almost got it full. I think that's probably enough for today's feeding. And I think I'm gonna go park this under the overhang here quickly. There we go. I just don't want my good 8R to uh, see my uh, case uh, tractor demo I have coming. So he might get a little jealous. And uh, this good thing, yep, I don't. I don't want them to feel bad because uh, he's treated me well. Or she. Most farmers call their tractors female. Maybe. I don't know. All right, we'll shut that door. We still have a little bit of mess outside, but oh well. See, it's a cold winter morning. But, uh,. Ground, it's still not getting down below uh, freezing very often, so you can still be out there chiseling, which is what I plan to do with the new demonstration. I think it would be a good uh, demo to uh, good use of it, anyways. I mean, really, I have nothing else. It's not like I'm going to hook it up to a planter. All right, so now we'll feed our uh, most important. All right, so they are fed now. So now I need to go and get my demonstration. It's kind of odd, I know. Usually the dealership brings a demo to you, but uh, for this instance, uh, they want me to go pick it up. I know, it's odd. Let's see, which trailer? I have that loaded, so I can't really use that. I'm gonna have to unhook 
one of my uh, trucks here. Poor semi. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna use the uh, good old Peterbilt. Uh, you know, I've been using this a lot. Peterbilt has been sad, so we're gonna go run that. But first, before I start that, pretty sure old Timmy was supposed to be here. Let me go call him. Supposed to be here about a half hour ago. So, so yeah. Can't get a hold of Timmy. So I'm a little worried. He just lives right in town here. Gonna run over there quickly. Just to see. I just want to make sure he's okay. Not disregarded me. So, means it's a quick little drive. We'll run over there quickly. So, he lives right down here in a beautiful blue house. Pretty looking. Don't see any vehicles in the driveway. See in here and just peer in the garage. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's our vehicles. Yeah, that's that's his wife's vehicle. Can you see why they are together? I mean, I'm surprised they didn't paint their house purple or something. All right, let's uh, knock on the door. All right, so uh, I don't want to videotape that because. It's Pretty private, but uh, uh, basically he just slept in. He's gonna head to the farm here quickly. I need to get him on that Steiger again. So, Timmy, you need to be put to work. But if you don't know, Timmy is a uh, normal. You know, he likes sleeping most of the time, and he sleeps for you know long periods. He doesn't go to sleep till like two in the morning and sleeps. If he doesn't have to work, he sleeps till two in the afternoon. Uh, that's not me. It's not a much of a farmer's, uh, basically, lifestyle, but that's what Timmy likes to do. As long as he's not working for me when he's sleeping in, I don't really care. But I do care when he's supposed to be here in the morning. All right. Yeah, sit out. Well, you sit in the dry stuff. Come on, Gina. So now I'm going to get the Peterbilt finally. Start that up. Warmed up. Get it unhitched. And get it on the trailer. Alright. So we are hitched up. Timmy better be getting to work here soon. I know he had to take a shower and all that, but... Come on. Let's rush it a little bit when you're late. So we're going to run down here. Go to the Case dealership. They're going to have to show us a quick demonstration because uh, I've never even been messed with something this advanced so this is uh, basically farm changing technology they got here so this this will basically put a lot of us out of business maybe well I could see it won't put you guys in suspense any longer the Thomas case tractor man that thing is a lot bigger than what I was expecting it to be wow so I'm gonna get this thing turned around and then I'm gonna have to uh, get a demonstration on how to use this because uh, I mean who knows how to use that thing that's definitely something where you need to read the owner's manual prior to use because uh, that can be uh, a little intimidating. I wasn't expecting it to be this big. These must be like some type of sensors right there. Cameras, sensors, I mean carbon fiber, uh, mud flaps. This thing is a Vance. Look at that. A three-point hitch, a PTO, uh, all your hookups even has a little step up there I guess to control the antennas up here hmm. hopefully you never uh, lose service and this thing just goes amok it's like uh yeah there's the 
battery, which is weird, right by the tank. So you have your death fluid, you got your bat, your diesel. Uh, man. Yep. So this is basically, most of the companies have an autonomous, uh, something tractor like this. But, uh, these cases basically trying this out at different farms. So, uh, man, this is a Magnum. I mean, look at the difference between the two. Alright, so let's get this loaded up. Alright, we got that beast. Man, does it look sexy. I have to give it to Case. They definitely made a sexy looking tractor. I mean, look at that thing. That is mean and sexy all together hate to see that running through the field without a cab. You'd be like, oh, I don't know. We are going to go back here, get this thing put on one of our chisels, just see what this thing, if it's what they say is correct, and this thing is a completely autonomous. I know I need to clear off my roads because, man, I've been driving on this snow for a while now. Getting a little nasty out here. So, basically, you got a computer system that this runs. And you can just kind of hook it up. I think the biggest challenge probably is going to be like hooking it up to the chisel and all that. Like, that can't be the easiest thing to do. Start this thing up now. You know what really prepared me for driving this autonomous vehicle? Playing Farming Simulator. I mean, I am prepared to drive a vehicle like this, steer a vehicle. You just drive it around. It's just like playing on a remote control pretty cool I think but in like real life so we're gonna hook it up to one of our big old chisels so this thing is 450 horses this version so it's the biggest magnum I believe they make so it should be enough for this chisel should be plenty for this chisel actually all right so we are hitched up so we got everything hitched up, so, uh, man, then the front hood of this thing is just so intimidating. It looks like some big bug or something. I mean, pretty good detail. I mean, just look at all that. You can see the fans and everything in there. You can see most of the engine. Man, carbon fiber, freaking mud flap. I know I just already said that. But the detail on this thing, and I think the coolest thing is these, uh, the lights on it. Them lights are just so cool. I mean, they should put these on their other tractors. So that is cool looking. Alright, so now we got to get this to the field. The only difference is now I'm going to have to drive my other... Uh, truck to the field so I can manage this tractor. Oh, look who finally showed up. Old Timmy. Timmy. Timmy asked if he could drive that thing. What a rookie. <laughs> he knows nothing. Can't drive this. Man, that guy. I'm gonna put him in the Steiger and I'm gonna control this. This is way too advanced for Timmy. I don't know. I mean, he's a younger crowd. He probably is probably, uh, he probably can drive this easily. It's just me that has trouble with it. All right, I have it unfolding now. Hydraulic seem like there might be a little slow on that thing. Now let's see if we can get it to set off in a straight line. There it goes. 
just to make sure I'm going to drive with it for a little while. I'm gonna make sure this thing doesn't do nothing, uh, Timmy uh, category. Running good so far. Surprised like case uh, dealerships ain't out here uh, for this demonstration. You would think they would want to publicize this because this is huge, but they basically want to help get this uh, knowledge out here. And this will basically make real life farming more like a farming simulator, I guess, in a way. The only thing bad is like, will this. If this hits like a uh, frozen chunk of land and stuff like that, will the computer be smart enough or will the farmer be able to like detect it by maybe uh, workload or spin factor? I don't know, but uh, them type things where it might be important to actually be in the cab for. If you have to uh, raise your implement or if you have a blown hydraulic line stuff like that I don't know I mean I guess maybe they do have a camera system on back but camera systems only get you so far like I don't think it's not gonna get you everything like you're gonna have to be able to be in the field make immediate corrections and stuff but could this thing go I mean it is really chiseling up that ground pretty good. A more, I want to go to the other end here just to see how it turned around. That's like my biggest concern here. Alright, here's the challenge. How is this thing going to turn around? Let's see. Uh oh. It's turning towards me. No. Nope. Oh. Nope. Just, just tricking us a little bit. So it makes a pretty wide turn, which I guess isn't bad. I wonder if, what if there was a building or a pole on the side or maybe mud on the end of the field. Would it be able to check that or would it just get stuck? Wow. Turned almost perfectly there. That's pretty impressive. The only thing bad about this is I like chiseling. And I don't really want to have to sit here and watch somebody else chisel. I'd want it to, you know, drive in the tractor myself. Like, that's the only thing real bad about this is uh, I don't get to chisel. I guess if you were, this was running a grain cart or you know you were in the field too while this was running and you're basically chiseling while you're running this then you could keep an eye out for it I guess it would be like a uh, cheap employee that doesn't sleep in like the Timmy does I guess then it would be not that bad but uh, don't think it would it's to the point now that it will take the farmer completely out of the field. Just my opinion though. See how this thing turns around? We might be a little bit too close here. Ooh, yeah, back up a little bit. Give it plenty of space. I was thinking on uh, putting my truck right in front of it just to see if it stops, but I mean, I like my truck and that thing is expensive don't think I want to demonstrate that just yet. I mean, look at that thing goes. I mean, this thing is way better than Timmy. I mean, that's not saying a whole lot, but uh, it it's actually better at tillage than Timmy. I mean, Timmy sometimes just doesn't even go straight down the field. But uh, Timmy, you have met your match here. Uh, I can't afford this autonomous vehicle, so this thing is going to be uh, sky high for price and everything, but uh, maybe one day I will be able to afford this thing, but thank you for the case 
International for bringing it down for demonstration. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you later here in Nebraska. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe.